All right, so I've decided I'm going to go ahead and demo a little bit showing what I was just talking about with getting these holes drilled nice and perpendicular. So I've already got this one started, but I'll show you the process. You can, you can pretend that this hole doesn't exist. It's only a center punch hole. Pretend that that's the case and we'll start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the drill bit into my drill. And all I'm going to do now is drill into that uh, center punch just a little bit, just enough for the drill bit to find its way into the hole. So let me just drill the drill down, just like that, just enough so that the drill bit can find its way back into there. So at this point, I take my wood block with the pre-drilled holes in it. This was pre-drilled at the drill press, so it's nice and square. Put my drill bit in. Make sure this surface is clean. And now I just put the drill bit into that little shallow hole that I just drilled. Put my wood down, make sure it's not resting on any rivets. If the wood doesn't line up the way you want it to, all you could do, all you need to do is flip it over and then you can reposition it. But in this case, this works just fine for me. So this can go into there, this can go down, nothing's in the way, everything is clean. So now I C-clamp it. Keep the C-clamp out of the way of your drill. Now make sure that that's seated in there good. Clamp it just like that. It's nice and flat. I can take the drill bit out, put it back in my drill motor. I can go ahead and drill that all the way through. That is pretty much all there is to it. So at this point, you could take a mirror, you can stick it up underneath here, and you can see exactly where that hole comes out in relation to the support structure that's up inside here. And thankfully, these marks on this airplane work just fine for me. These holes look really nice up underneath here as far as edge distance on the longer on and edge distance that's on this angle piece that's here. So, very pleased. So, let me, uh, let me get these drilled and I'll come back. Another thing Keep in mind, if you're going to step up drill sizes like I am, you want to pre-drill each hole, obviously. So I had just drilled this one, as you saw, all the way through. I put in my next bigger size drill bit, and then I came back in here, and I drilled that down just a little bit using the next size drill. So now I know that this drill bit, this size drill bit, will find that location. And then you just repeat the process. So now that I've pre-drilled just a little bit, I can fit the next hole, make sure this is clean, make sure that the drill bit sits down in there. Now see, this isn't going to work. Oh yes, it will. It, it clears all of the rivets. So there again, I just clamp it and then I can finish drilling. But Every time you step up a drill size, make sure you pre-drill your hole just enough so the drill bit can find its way. As you continue to go up in size, drill the hole, it should be nice and perpendicular, 
and uh, it, sh it should give you good edge distance as long as these measurements are correct. All right, let me get this done. Howdy, everyone. All right, so I just took the horizontal stabilizer off of the deck back here. A couple of things I want to point out again. The instructions talk about a spacer in the back. I believe it's 3 16 inch spacer, spacer in the back and a eighth inch or 0.125 spacers that go up front. That's to set the incidence angle for for the horizontal but again tr just trying to keep things as close as possible to the real world i went ahead and laid the spacer bit in the back i went ahead and laid some eighth inch uh, bar stock up front put the horizontal stabilizer on i centered the horizontal stabilizer the best i could back here basically just using the horns the distance from these edges to the uh, horns, the elevator horns. I gauged that and then I kind of gauged just some other references along the side here. Um, this edge on both of these tabs in relation to the rib flanges that I had to cut back. Just things of that nature. Any reference point that you can get, the more the better back here to get the back of this situated. And then I clamped it here and here to basically hold this in place. And then I took my measurements like I had talked about before from the front corner of the firewall back to the tips of the horizontal using the uh, forwardmost rivet as a reference. Taking those measurements side to side, going back and forth, I was able to set the horizontal in this manner here to get it perpendicular to the center line of the fuselage. Once I had that done, then I took my drill bit and I reached up under here. I found this hole, stuck the drill bit up through it and made my mark and then I came from the other side through here, found this hole came up through and marked it. Now I've got the horizontal on the bench. I've got it upside down and you can see clearly where those marks are. There's one right there. And there's one right there. And the edge distance is great. I mean, I've got great edge distance from this edge and I've got great edge distance from this edge on both of them. And when I feel underneath here, you can kind of tell where that hole is going to come through. And I've got plenty of distance from the hole back to this radius of the angle. So there shouldn't be any problems getting a nut on a 3 16 bolt when it's down through the angle. Again, I'm just kind of doing that by feel. I can just kind of eyeball where this is going to come through. And I can tell if, that, if there was a hole there and I go back to the web, I got plenty of space. So I am more than pleased with these. I'm going to go ahead and drill these. I'm going to put this back up on the fuselage and I'm going to run a couple of bolts through there and see what happens. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll drill these holes, put it back over on the fuselage, and uh, I'll use the spacers. I'll make sure that I use these spacers again. I'll drop the bolts through, and then I'll, I don't know if I'll clamp it or not, but once I get the bolts through the assembly and I get it clamped back here, I'm going to check my measurements again from the fuselage back to make sure that it's still perpendicular to the fuselage. All right, talk to you guys soon. Howdy, everyone. All righty, so here are the two holes that I just drilled in the horizontal stabilizer. This is, of course, upside down on my workbench. But I did get these holes drilled, 
after I had laid them out like I just talked about and I had the horizontal in place on the airplane here are the holes that I had drilled in the fuselage and um, I drilled 3 16 hole diameter a lot of times on the plans they'll tell you to use a number 12 drill bit but a number 12 drill bit is a little bit larger than the bolt diameter I wanted these locations to be uh, a little bit more precise so I used a 3 16 drill bit on these holes and the holes on the horizontal stabilizer itself put it up here and it dropped right in I, I put the horizontal up here and I was able to drop the bolts right into these two locations and I rechecked my measurements and it is just fine very pleased so far so what I'm working on now is this. You'll note, again, looking at the plans, there are two bolts here, two bolts on each side that go through this heavy angle bracket on the horizontal stabilizer. The outermost bolt on each side goes into the, um, the longer on on the fuselage. This is the bolt hole that we just drilled. Now I have to figure out where to put this second bolt. There are no dimensions given for that second bolt. So here's the deal. You'll note underneath here there's a spacer. That spacer captures both bolts. That spacer is depicted here. They call it a shim. You can call it what you want, but make sure you make it to the size shown on the drawing. So I have those spacers made. And here they are. So now these spaces are basically going to dictate where the other two bolts are going to be drilled. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to take one spacer, I'm going to position it over the angle, I'm going to run it up to the edge of the horizontal skin here, and then again, as always, I'll come up from underneath and I'll make a mark through this existing hole. I'll do that for both sides, just like this. I'll get the spacer positioned where I want it. I'll come up underneath, I'll mark that hole, and then I'll drill that hole in both pieces. At that point, I can measure on each spacer from that hole that I've now dr drilled into these, I can measure from there and I can measure from this edge, figure out optimum hole spacing, and that's where I'll put the other hole. Once I have both holes drilled in the spacer, I can put the spacer back in place. I can now drop this bolt all the way through the horizontal and the spacer, and then use the hole that's in the spacer to now mark the horizontal then this can go back over to the airplane and I can drop the bolts back through here to position this on the airplane and then I can drill, I can mark with the drill bit through the second hole using this as a guide. So I'll do that a step at a time here. First of all I'm going to position these in place I'll mark the hole from underneath and then I'll get these drilled. All right, that's the plan. I'll talk to you later. Howdy everyone. All right, so here's my spacer so far. Now I have the hole drilled through it and this hole again was um, located from the existing hole in the horizontal stabilizer. After I marked the hole, I took it over to a drill press and drilled it through. As always, I do as much as I can on the drill press just to make sure that the hole is nice and perpendicular. Now that I have that drawn, or now that I have it drilled, all I had to do was figure out where to put that second bolt. Fortunately, this piece is long enough. Again, the dimensions to make this piece is um, on, the on the plans. Make your piece to size. For the second hole, you can just come over your whatever you are comfortable with 
for edge distance. Of course, you have to maintain minimal edge distance, but I came over minimal edge distance plus a 16th. So I actually came over, um, what is that? I'm sorry, I came over minimum edge distance plus a 16th. So that would be 5 sixteenths from this edge for that size hole. So that's what that line here represents. That's, that's my reference line from the edge. Of course, this line is drawn on here using a square. And then, of course, since the piece is large enough, you've got plenty of edge distance between that mark and the hole. So this is a good line here. So 5 sixteenths from this edge is the edge distance that I elected to use. And then I just marked another line using the center of this hole as a reference. And again, using a square, I drew a line centered off of the center of this hole. And then where the two cross is obviously where I'm going to punch my mark. And then I'll go ahead and drill that. And that will give me, I've already got edge distance here established nicely. I just drew out my edge distance for this hole here. I put this hole parallel on the same center as this hole. Mark my line, center punch, take it over to the drill press, drill it. All right, let me do that. And then we'll fit them up.